Hello and welcome to the Dial Global Virtual Lounge, the show where we discuss the future of the modern workplace and the impact of diversity, inclusion and belonging with the world's most successful and innovative business leaders. Today I am joined by a fantastic group of individuals from Verizon Media. I'm very lucky that I've had the opportunity to get to know everyone who is on today's panel beforehand, which is fabulous. Um, so we have got a treat in store when it comes to talking about um, various respective pieces um, of helpful information when it comes to leading in uncertain times and the impact that Verizon and their teams have had on this. So hopefully we will learn some real life case studies as well. So joining me today on the, uh, on the virtual lounge are Emily, who is Diversity and Inclusion Manager at Verizon, Camille, who is the Publisher Development Manager, Polina, the Media Specialist for Xbox and the Women's Inclusion Network, or ERG Lead, uh, for the UK Culture Force and UK Activation Lead, and finally Ailish, who is the Agency Partner for Wave Maker and also the Mental Health Ally. Welcome to the show, guys. Thanks so much for being here. And it's absolutely brilliant to see you all beaming back at me today in the, uh, in the world of uncertain times that we are living in. So it's great to see that we're all managing to stay connected. And you, you, I know that you guys have got so many um, great ideas and you're implementing loads of things at Rise On, which is fantastic um, and really spearheading through diversity and inclusion employee engagement and how to uh, manage homeworking at, uh, at the present time. So before we get started, I just wondered whether um, for those who are listening in on demand, whether you might be able to just tell us a little bit about Verizon Media, because I obviously am lucky to know the business very well. Um, but I think there are those who perhaps don't realize that Verizon is associated with other very, very well-known household brands. So guys, I wonder whether you might be able to, to shed a little bit of, of light. Starting with you, Emily, because I love to pick on you. Uh, so going to you first. <laughs> no, of course. So um, Verizon Media is actually owned by Verizon. Um, Verizon is one of the largest American telecom uh, companies. Um, they offer wireless products, but they also offer um, phones and, and subscriptions of that kind. Um, they actually provide subscriptions to uh, the U.S. and for their field um, to 154 million subscribers. Um, so Verizon is actually more, more commonly known in, in the U.S. Um, they do own Verizon Media. That is the combination of AOL and Yahoo. So combined joints and then all the brands that come with underneath that. So Huffington Post, um, as we know, um, Polina, Polina's on here for Xbox. Um, and some of the other kind of well-known things we have, like Yahoo Mail, Yahoo Sports, Yahoo Finance. So we have a mixture of organizations, and including our Riot um, business. So it is a house of brands. Um, it's you know really brands that people love and use every day. Um, and including for myself, it's what made me me actually approach AOL at the time, um, which was then part of Verizon. And I've seen it go through a transition of, of phases to where we are as Verizon Media today. Thanks so much for, for sharing. And I think it's amazing that Verizon owns so many brands. I have to say, I didn't even know. I mean, I did today, um, you know, of course, and, and, and before this, but owning brands like Huffington Post and these household brands, you know, especially Xbox as well, it seems, um, you know, very interesting uh, brand to be associated with, which on that note, everyone does know you guys for, for the brands. And what about kind of the ethos? Because those brands have got lots of different positive messages um, associated with them. What does Verizon and the organization holistically perhaps more stand for? So I just wanted to clarify that um, Xbox is not actually owned by Verizon Media, but it is part of a partnership between Verizon Media and Microsoft, which is how I am here. Uh, and I think what comes, uh, what puts all these brands together is really that we want to create the networks that move the world forward. And I think all of those brands really allow us to do that. Um, and I think at times like this, this messaging and that mission, the stance that brings all the brands under one umbrella is even more powerful at times when we really need to stay connected and 
technology is the way to do that. Absolutely. And I know, Emily, specifically, you have, have talked um, before about the different areas. Or I think it is the four C's that, that you guys operate under. I wonder whether you could tell us a little bit more about that or, or perhaps others can, can, can shed their thoughts on, on what these actually mean, both internally and I guess externally as well. Yeah, so our 4Cs operating model is really um, focused on our employee resource groups, um, or what we call ERGs. And those are employee-led, voluntary or organizations, communities within our um, business. And 4Cs is also something that DNI operates under. It, it really is across culture, career, community, customer, or, or commerce. So to um, Polina's point and further building the brands that people love, you know, it's how do we impact those customers externally through all of the work that we do. Um, the culture is, you know, how are we creating a culture um, within our organization? It's not one person that leads the culture, creates it. It comes from within and it comes from all of us leading by our values. Um, and the career is really how are we exploring and expanding individuals' careers within the organization, but how are we actually saying our doors are open for everyone? So, you know, when we talk about career, it's also when anyone wants to join our organization across any of our brands or within the corporate kind of more focused areas like HR and, and legal and finance. Um, and community to our communities, but also how are we creating those internally? Um, we have very, very strong um, kind of missions across Verizon and then for the more in Verizon media around sustainability and CSR. So how are we creating those moments? And it's, um, it's the ERG's really driving principles, the, the four C's and furthermore DNI. I absolutely love this. And the fantastic thing about employee resource groups is you really can make them as diverse and eclectic as you want. And, um, you know, obviously fantastic to have you all here because you're all involved in very different ways in something that still is ultimately a holistic community, both internally and also externally when it comes to acquiring and, and promoting hiring uh, the unusual suspects and, and not just the usual suspects, which I know you know all about, Emily, when it comes to talent talent specifically. So I wondered, whilst we are on the subject of employee resource groups, um, you know, for those that perhaps don't, don't know, what are the Verizon employee resource groups specifically? What is it they do? How are they set up? And how are all of you involved in those different facets? Because from my understanding, and again, different ERGs are set up in different ways within different organizations because it's very much about the personality of that company and having a bespoke approach. Um, but the nice thing I think about what you guys do is that they are interwoven into each other. And so whilst you have got these different individual groups for different individuals, you're also quite aware of what we call intersectionality, where actually there is um, the, the entwined nature between how these ERGs actually communicate and liaise with one another. Um, so perhaps we could do a quick round robin and, and discuss each of our involvement in that, because I would be fascinated to learn, and I'm sure our listeners would too. I can go first if you like. Um, so I work closely with the green team. Um, they're an interest group and I guess we're all having, we all have the same interest in wanting to promote um, a sustainable environment and positive um, changes to the climate. And how I'm working with them at the moment is I'm organizing a virtual event for fashion sustainability awareness in June. Um, so it's looking likely that that um, event will be a virtual event based on the current situation, but that's not going to stop us. Um, and I guess it's it's really nice having a project to work on at the moment, having a virtual event to organize um, with the green team as it keeps me focused and it also keeps momentum while working from home. And at the same time, allows me to connect with people across the business that maybe I wouldn't work with um, on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and it's also really nice being able to bring an interest that I have outside of work into the workplace um, for the benefit of colleagues. Um, so that's just kind of something on, I'm working on at the moment um, with the green team. 
Fantastic. I love it. I love it. And, you know, it's just to pick up one of the things that you said that is given obviously the current environment that working with in um, having the chance to reach out to people that you wouldn't necessarily get to spend the time with and, and clearly you're doing that which is you know it's a shared passion and, and things that you share outside of work and so it's always nice to bring in a passion project which uh, mm. clearly um you're uh, you're doing a good job to rally up interest around that so thanks Ailish and uh, and and yeah I mean I guess well should, should we go around I don't know which side you can see the um I can go our screens can go. in but yeah Camille <laughs> So me, I'm more of a consumer of what uh, ERG brings us. So um, I'm going to tell you about my experience. Um, so uh, we are really lucky to get access to daily activities that are brought in by Culture Force. I think Paulina will tell more about this in a bit. Um, so we do have like yoga classes in the morning, gym class at midday with our very own sports teacher who usually uh, does the gym at the office. Uh, so this is like three times a week. Uh, we also have meditation so we can stay mentally, mentally stable and relax uh, every Thursdays. Um, so I think I've actually never been in, in such a good shape. And that's thanks to the ERGs, like maintaining this, this level of activities, whether we are at the office or whether we have to work from home. So that's great. And uh, also another example, um, we had our French managing director called Emric, who is also a DJ on his spare time. And cool. so, <laughs> yeah, it's a really cool, he's a really cool MD. Um, so um, every week uh, we do an happy hour usually at the office or every two weeks and like to counterbalance this uh, while we are at home. So Emric, DJ Emric is doing uh, an apero mix. So everyone uh, can dial into this and then we can all share our like pictures and and gifs and videos on how we are doing it at home and we share it on the Slack group and this creates a lot of interaction. So that's good that because usually the, those apparels are on our marvelous rooftop in uh, in the Paris office and now it's online and we can all have access to it. So that's that's really good. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that is so cool. DJ Emric in the house, I love it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> our mental health is so important. I know we were chatting last time about Down Dog, which I love as an app and, and yoga. I mean, it's quite a sight seeing loads of people online all doing yoga together. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, and Paulina, what about yourself? So as the listeners probably heard at the start, I'm the UK lead for the Women's Inclusion Network, ERG. And I have to say from the first day I joined the company, I have been very much impressed with like how not Verizon doesn't just say they care about diversity and inclusion, but they really show it through their daily actions. And a perfect example of that was something that happened last week uh, when uh, we delivered our latest gender pay gap results. And the reason why I say like it's really showing is that this year, the government actually allowed companies um, to not be obliged to post their results when it comes to gender pay gap because of the current situation. And Verizon still insisted on posting their results and being transparent about the progress they're making in that space. And I think that's really telling when a company doesn't make it an obligation to care about diversity, but they truly do, even at times like this. Uh, I think that's one of the most recent examples we've just finished a month of women history uh month celebrations and um, sadly halfway through that we obviously had to move everything online but again like having all these erg groups and working with every um erg group across the business like it's very much inclusive and i think the one thing that's really struck struck me when i joined the company that's different from other places that i've worked in is that ERG groups do actually work together and when they are thinking of a cause that we can support uh, whether that's uh, Pride in July or whether that's Women History Month in March all ERGs do actually come together and think of like if you are running a financial uh, well-being seminar for employees how can our parenting group benefit from it and how can our uh, Asian community benefit from it and it's really really powerful to see like all these groups of people even though they are focused on different diversity 
elements of their own, all of them coming together into one whenever we need to make something happen and create that amazing environment that we all love and the reason why we all love going to work. Um, and I think being part of Culture Force as well when leading that, if for those who might not be aware, Culture Force is our um, on the ground culture engagement um, team that at the moment is very much a temperature sensor for how do people feel uh, in the current climate when we are away from the office. And I think we have been really good to very quickly adapt as a company to the new normal uh, through some of the things that Camille mentioned, whether that is we've realized that people need more resources when it comes to mindfulness, whether that's introducing them to new materials through our internal resource hubs, whether that's doing more mindfulness classes every week, whether that's introducing yoga. Obviously, we are still trying to maintain some of the normality through things like happy hours that we would have had previously. Um, but it's really challenged us, I think, and pushed us in a positive light to think of how can we still maintain that normality, but push ourselves further to like still drive engagement at times when everyone's at home and some people can feel very isolated uh, and very anxious in the current climate. And I think Culture Force and the ERGs together have done a tremendous job in like finding what are the pain points uh, uh, for our staff at the moment um, and then tackling it in a marvelous way. And I think some of, for example, we've already mentioned a ton, but other things that we're doing is we have a, um, a hashtag good vibes only um, Slack channel, which actually we want people to just be surrounded by positivity and this is our way of saying you don't just have to watch the news 24 7. here's a ton of good news to look out for or a ton of funny memes to look at whenever you need to pick me up and we can you can you're in your work environment another thing that we did last week was we know a lot of people feel anxious going food shopping at the moment so we looked into um in each office providing them with alternatives of uh, for not having to go to the typical supermarket that might have long delivery times but it's simple things like that that i think really really um make people feel at home in the company um and help them manage mm -hmm. there's some really really valuable points there and i love the hashtag good vibes piece because a lot of the advice that we're even getting is look don't watch too much news <laughs> i've never heard that in in my entire lifetime but don't watch too much news because it can be bad for mental health and so pushing out there um you know positive content and pick-me-ups as as you uh, call them there polina i think is absolutely key and um you know drawing on a uh, another point that you mentioned there about um, the organization really speaking to its values. I think this is a time where we will genuinely see which organizations will come out of this stronger, which organizations mean what they say, which organizations are paying lip service to something that they say they do, but don't actually do when push comes to shove. And so publicizing can be uh, a little bit of, I don't want to say a pain right now, but let's face it, everyone's got other things at the top of their mind, family and health uh, well-being completely understandably so publishing results at, at times like this when there's a million and other things on the plate is is really quite admirable because it's uh, it's not a uh, need to do as you say the government aren't telling us that we absolutely have to do this because they appreciate there are other priorities but when we do go back to business as normal in inverted commas whatever that may look like those organizations that have kept their colors pinned to the mast and they have said look you know we speak by our values we speak by our quality um you know we believe in gen genuine kind of gender e equality and making sure um that everyone knows this already i i, I think is critical and so uh, whilst it is obviously a very turbulent time for many i do think we'll see a interesting separation here and i'm already seeing organizations starting to rise to the top almost how how cream does with milk um with organizations that really want to do good that are starting to now really shine a light on genuine best best practice and um yeah and i think like one last thing to add to that that maybe i didn't mention earlier is like it really shows in the simple things like we as emily mentioned part of our four c's which is 
being focused on our employees first. Um, and the CEOs, the CEO of Verizon and Verizon Media are holding daily stand-ups where every meeting starts with our people come first. And I think that honesty and that transparency and the fact that they're open to questions and answers every single day, it really shows that it's not just something that's on a piece of strategy paper, but it actually means the word to them and they do actually believe that their employees come first. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And to that point, I mean, I think, um, you know, the CEO of Verizon, Hans, was referring to the fact that he was happy to see the VPN usage go down on the weekend, you know, that productivity overall through the week is, is, is off the chain and it's more, more productive than we ever have been through our VPN usage. But equally, um, seeing, you know, appreciating, taking the moment to say, I'm glad you also all switched off this weekend because I can see that it's down. Um, and that moment of all of them kind of saying, you come first, um, your health, your family, you know, from from the top CEO, as Selene said, of Verizon to our own CEO, uh, Guru, um, talking about what it means, but equally inviting um, external professionals to these meetings like Deepak Chopra and um, those from John Hoskins at university to really talk us through um, what is happening out there, but what are some of the ways that we can counter act that for ourselves and our mental health. And I think one of those elements is as a, as, as a global um, lead overall, so my main role globally is to lead the employee resource groups, is our neurodiversity group who have been extraordinarily active right now. And that's part of where, um, and this is um, kind of mental health allies uh, program has come out of in terms of her being a mental health ally um, that stemmed from our neurodiversity group. And actually weekly, they're, hoping, uh, they're hosting kind of these common rooms where anyone can join and, and have a conversation about how they're dealing with certain situations, how are they feeling. So we're having check-ins really from top-down, um, employee-led voluntary organizations to DNI holding open round tables, and us really trying to think of ways that we can really continue the momentum, continue the diversity story in this time of a virtual world where we have a very different normal, right? Um, So how do we continue to have our employees engaged, not only with each other, um, not only with their own lives, but with the mission of the the organization, not losing sight of that mission, that we we all are here because we truly believe in the organization and we want it to do the best that it can. So how are we even working internally to ensure there's resources where we need to um, and, and perhaps where there are there's less resource needed in some areas, like how do we regain focus and how do we redeploy people to a place where they can, they can operate in a, in a different way and contribute in a different way perhaps than they have done before. 100%. And reverting back to the piece there about the CEO Hans and your own CEO, which is, which is excellent, is CEOs and leaders really at this point in time cannot over communicate communicate, communicate, communicate. It is absolutely fundamental. And again, uh, drawing from best practice with organizations, those that are seeing from from market research, the highest levels of engagement during this time is those that have got leaders that are willing not only to be open and honest about uh, what is happening within the market, but also who are over over communicating and speaking with their teams on a day-to-day basis, sometimes even on a twice daily basis and in their personal environments, which actually sometimes Gives a window into the personal life of, of others and actually in a way does uh, does bring us closer but um, you know some of the facets there that you were talking about Emily are absolutely fundamental and it's really um, interesting to hear more about what you guys are doing at Verizon when it comes to mental health and mental health allies which of course is um, you know absolutely critical at this time where we are um, mainly in, in kind of self-isolation and uh, wondering uh, not only what might, the future might hold but also how we can manage that mental health. And, um, you know, I guess before kind of getting on to um, asking you uh, what this looks like, what other organizations and people can learn from and those internally, how we can access all these tools and resources, 
Could you just give us a, a little summary of how we can get in touch with everyone about the respective employee resource groups? I know you've got a number of internal processes and pieces um, that people can kind of tap into. Is, uh, is the way that we do that kind of online and, and there is the access to the COVID hub where you have the, the, the mental wellness and health side of things as well? Yeah, I mean, um, I'll let those chime in as well. But I mean, we do have our own internet where we have access to all of it. But we also, as Kemi mentioned earlier, is um, our Slack channels. So each employee resource group has their own Slack channel and it's open to every employee. You don't have to necessarily be a member. And realizing that employee resource groups aren't just about active leads or members, it's about allyship, it's about champions, it's those that identify or do not identify with those respective groups. You know, you don't have to identify with one of the, the nine employee resource groups to be part of it. You can be that champion. We know that it oftentimes takes a majority to help the minority have that conversation and everyone whether you're diverse or not, needs a, needs a sponsor. I need someone to kind of uh, champion them through, especially during times like this. Um, and then there's there's a number of other areas we have. Um, so mental health allies, as I said, is there um, a set of individuals in the UK. Um, everyone's aware of who they are. Um, we make sure that everyone understands that that there is someone they can speak to. They're not there as a, a psychologist or you know, um, a, a practitioner in terms of, of, of health, but they are there to listen and they are there to just kind of point individuals in the right direction um, and to other resources that we have. Yeah, I can no, speak no. to that point as well. Yeah, I took the mental health ally training last year. Um, so I'm a mental health ally for anyone in the London office who has a concern about their mental health or perhaps the mental health of a loved one or maybe just want someone to speak to um, they can reach out to myself or to any of the allies in um, confidentiality and speak to us and um, if they feel the need that they would like additional support um, we can signpost them to the supports available offered through Verizon Media so we have supports like the um, employee uh, assistance program so this is 24 7 support line available to all verizon media employees but actually available to anyone living in the same household as that employee as well um, and you get access to five um, counseling sessions per year per employee through the program um, there's also cigna healthcare for all verizon media employees as well um, so for whatever need you have, you can call the Cigna line and you'll be in touch with a Cigna nurse who will then kind of assess your condition or your need and then set you up with the um, supports that you need. Um, we're also a member of NABS through Verizon Media and they also have a number of support services available. Um, they also have an advice line. They have a resilience program. They have um, mentorship programs which um, any of us can apply for as employees of Verizon Media. So there's a number of supports there for um, all employees at Verizon Media um, and like I mentioned the Ally program really signposts um, employees to those support networks available and I think Kami you had more information about Babylon and the app so I'll let you speak to that support network as well. Since this year, we've got very access to very good support. It's called Babylon. And this is actually a GP service uh, via app. So this is very good. Uh, it's very easy to set up. You can book an appointment via GP and get prescription, get a referral, and you can get uh, access to a specialist um, also via the app. So if you hurt yourself while you're doing the gym and you're at home, you can see a physio and they can give you exercise. Um, so that's very great service when you can't get out of your home. So we are really lucky that we got access to this since this year, right on time, I would say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when you're so active, I can tell you're so much more active <laughs> than <laughs> you're at home if you get injured when you exercise. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> this is so brilliant though um, the amazing thing about it again i'm getting really over overexcited here but this was in place long before covid happened so it's not that this is a um, snap reaction to something that has just happened but ailey who did this training some time ago which i think is brilliant mm -hmm. and for those who are listening in that aren't really sure an ally is basically it is where you are supporting a specific group or, or you know in this case it's initially is when it comes to mental health you don't need to belong to that specific employee resource group in order to be an ally that is the beautiful thing and you know really anyone can get involved but it's uh, it's fascinating to hear that, that you've trained up and you've actually managed to glean these extra skills because again you know that's something wonderful that goes into your 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 kind of your knowledge bank of personal skills that you are a trained um listener ultimately and i think we talked about this when when we had a round table previously but that service of being 24 7 is unbelievable i used to work for the samaritans for, for three years on a voluntary basis and they were very proud that they were it was the leeds branch actually and they were very proud that they were one of the only branches in the uk that was managed managed to stay open for 24 hours so the fact that you guys have that as a resource i would encourage everyone to get involved in that and externally if you aren't obviously part of Verizon Media or the wider group there are places like the Samaritans and people who are willing to to speak uh, to you through whatever issues you may have um, but Ailish just coming back quickly to the training that you went through because I would love to uh, to be able to share some of this great knowledge with, with others um, but what was this program how long did it take and um, what made you kind of want to get involved in in this and can you talk through some of these experiences because I'm sure that can be quite I'm sure it's fascinating but I'm sure that is also um, quite a challenge in itself actually listening to people who have got um, emotional requirements yeah um so the training was about three days and yeah it was quite intense training um to go through and we watched some videos um where people had a mental health illness so we would be able to recognize that illness within the workplace or if someone came to speak to us um about a particular mental health illness um so i feel really privileged having done the training that i can recognize um, situations where people may need additional support in a work environment or perhaps if someone is living with someone with um, a mental health issue that they have someone to speak to in confidence and with it, um, in a confidential way and um, it's a really nice service for the company to be able to provide um, and even just to have a greater understanding of mental health issues um, we, we learned about a wide number, so I have a greater understanding now of mental health and the importance of maintaining positive mental health um, also. Yeah, so that's kind of an overview. And um, yeah, it's really great, I think, that Verizon Media have the Mental Health Ally program available. Um, so hopefully, um, perhaps next year we can get more people trained up on the program because it's about 20 people per um, program. They wouldn't train more than that at one time just so everyone can have mm -hmm. kind of enough time to speak and participate in everything. Wow, and I bet yeah, you didn't realize that when you took that on that we'd be going through this and probably inundated with lots and lots of different calls from from different individuals but um sorry to cut you off there emily just uh no, very no, no. very quickly i was saying that uh, you know what what's really interesting is the mental health is being talked about a lot more now and that represents uh, as emily i know you, you've spoken about a lot in, in the past is um, ultimately an invisible diversity not all diversity when it comes to diversity and inclusion i think a lot of individuals do presume that we may be talking about something visible whether it be gender whether it be race here but actually um, everyone has got a diversity story and um, or at least has someone that they know who has experience of, of diversity in one form or another and mental health is a very very um, poignant um, element of invisible diversity that exists below that skin level and that surface level that unless we ask unless we really kind of try to scratch below the surface of what is going on there, we may never know about and so it uh, you know I'm so pleased that in one way it is being spoken about more and great to hear that, that you guys are embracing it and especially even allowing others in the household I mean that's a huge amount of resource really really huge so so huge commendations on that and sorry Emily I 
very rudely. No, no. I just wanted to for the listeners to know that we we partnered with mental um, mental health at work. Um, so it's an organization. Um, we had a really really great um, learning partner named Maggie Rose, and she was wonderful. She, she you know she really went through. Um, you know, what we were looking for, tailoring it to the organization. So the mental health at work team is phenomenal. Um, it actually came through our um, close association with Mediacom. Um, we work closely at some of the agencies we do partner with. And Mediacom, you know, recognized that we, we wanted, we were very active in the employee resource groups, that we had neurodiversity, um, and, and actually made that connection for us. And then they, so they also work with mental health allies and it's part of the wider industry as a whole, I would say. Um, and, you know, I, I sit on the board with the IAB where there's a number of other organizations that come and we, you know, we, we meet actually quarterly to discuss what each of the organizations from the likes of Facebook, Microsoft, agencies, um, the Guardian, we all come together to talk about what we're doing in this so that we can share best practices. Mm -hmm. um, and that's how some of these things come, come out. And it's, learning from other industry um, bodies and um, organizations to really do this for the greater good of our industry and our the technology and the media industry and the creative industry, um, where we, we do see, like other industries, huge, huge amounts of pressure on individuals to you know, work hard and fast, and, and that might not be the pace for everyone. So, you know, I think um, just for the listeners to know that they can also go out to mental health at um, work to, to find that partnership and create a mental health allies program internally. Thanks so much, Emily. And you are absolutely right. When it comes to peer-to-peer -peer learning, I think, and, and I hope that it is times like this that uh, the silver lining of the cloud is that we manage to embrace a more holistic way of learning from each other that we maybe view competitive uh, nurse especially within business as, as less important because this is as you say it's for the wider good of business and the wider good of ultimately society and our future generations of leaders because we don't want to set a good example right now and to share what we have learned in times of uncertainty how can we come together to make the world a better place and um, you know you're right there is a huge amount of pressure on people and especially younger generations as well you know obviously uh, with digital and social media being fantastic in, 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 in um, terms of communication communication and then we will talk about that very soon um, but it also can sometimes have the adverse effect where we do feel this pressure to be able to keep up with what we see as almost the, the norm and I think um, you know again it's a very very different world uh, that uh, the youngsters and uh, young people entering the workplace are starting to uh, starting to embrace so very 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 important indeed that we keep on pushing when it comes to peer-to-peer -peer learning engagement collaborations like you say there and um, talking about how people can build and sharing that knowledge of information i just think that is that is excellent you know there was time many years ago and i think with some you know certain organizations a lot fewer now these days who who don't want to share um competitive advantage but i think you know when it comes to things like this it's just so critical um you know heart and leadership with the heart and soul, I think is, uh, you know, truly without something too cheesy there, is, uh, is the way, is, uh, is the way, way forward. You know, those uh, who really do believe in true emotional intelligence. But um, moving on, because I'm conscious of how busy you all are and the fact that I could sit here and talk to you all uh, every day. But I wonder, could we share um, a little bit about our personal experiences? Because it would be remiss of me not to discuss directly uh, the impact of COVID-19 on us as individuals. So I think, um, you know, where we share those personal stories of our experiences it does help others to then come forward and share with us what they might be personally experiencing or might be scared perhaps to uh, to share with uh, with others so um you know i wonder whether we can share some of the feelings that we've had some of the um you know pieces that uh, that maybe others that we know have experienced and then um you know talk about what we can do to help these because We've obviously got within Verizon, I'm sure other businesses are like online communities and, and super amounts of inclusive um, digital platforms that, that we can kind of harness, harness the power. So, um, you know, I don't know where to start. I will, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let, let you go for it. Whoever feels like um, sharing first. I can start. Um, I think when we talk about how does everyone feel in the current situation, it's important not to 
um like what i found over the last few weeks and just being on social media and very digitally present i find that people very often group you in either oh they're coping well or they're not coping well with the current situation mm. and i feel like very often that's blurred lines at the moment you might have started off feeling really anxious but have accepted the situation now and feel better about it and i think this is where i fit in i started off feeling really anxious uh when the virus first came up uh and now i have accepted it and i feel much more positive about it i am starting to see the positive side of it uh, and the good things that could come out of this and I think very often like we from what I've seen so far we either group people in one or the other you can't be both and I think it's very important to understand that people will go through phases where they feel anxious and they feel good again they might go back to feeling anxious and they might go back to feeling good again um, and I think on that journey some of the things that really helped me was really looking into my routine and like finding my new routine at home i say new but it's very much resonates with what my routine was pre like coronavirus uh and i think it's important to find that routine it's important to like pay attention to your mental state now more than ever mm -hmm. i have really focused on really getting my meditation done once a day mm -hmm. starting to do like yoga in the morning so things that i always found excuses not to do I feel like now I'm more important than ever and like finding that time for yourself outside of work um, and I think all the groups and all the support that we have in Verizon like that was, does make me feel very grateful uh, that I work for an employer like them because we've just mentioned like a hundred different support networks that we have and a hundred different groups that we have but we do also have mindfulness channels and we do also have like other channels where we just share working from home um profiles and like what does everyone's desk look like and i think it's as a company we have managed to find that happy medium of staying connected but still providing people with the resources to switch off and really find the time for themselves and i think when it comes from the top level where as emily said hans our verizon media a verizon ceo is impressed when our vpn usage drops on weekends or i can see guru our verizon media ceo on the weekend going for runs or doing his yoga on his instagram account like it really shows that yeah i think it it is widely accepted and they do really show you how important it is to um take the time for yourself and really like put your mental health first uh, because i think this is the one thing that would become more and more clear as we get through this like the importance of mental health above everything thanks so much some really really great tips there and i i love the piece about uh seeing what the ceo is doing on instagram that's really cool because there was a time where uh i think organizations or, or, or people business leaders were very kind of you know black and white about segregating personal social media and business social media um but i i personally think it's fantastic because you get mm -hmm. to see a window into the soul of others and um ultimately if we can relate more to our leaders and to those that we work with i think we feel a closer connection and bond and ultimately want to work harder which is good good for all absolutely yeah, and um, we actually recently, um, I was just thinking even yesterday, um, we had uh, Sam Path, who's our president of Global Enterprise, actually release a white paper that I encourage listeners to, to, to go um, look at. And it, it was in line, in you know, partnership and, and working with the Boston Consultant group um, advising CIOs um, on the mission and, and how they can really start this new wave of remote working and the workplace of the future um, and it, it really talks about what are those technological demands how are we establishing that you know how can we create that and make it easier for our employees to, to work through this time and when you see things like that coming out you know from very big leaders in our organization and encouraging that there is going to be this new workplace of the future, this new normal, that it's okay. Um, trying to, again, release the, these pressures that we're going through is really encouraging. Um, and I think we all found it kind of surreal when this all started and like, where are we? What are we doing? Why is this, you know, how are we all going to react to this to actually the organization putting us at ease um, to say, you know what, now's the time to focus on you. Now's the time to focus on your family. Um, 
we see in a number of our kind of stand-ups and that Paulina mentioned with Hans is like going into leaders homes and and their kids saying hi and you know how do you deal with the meeting when you've got kids coming into the room and you know do you acknowledge them it's like well yes they're they're there they're in front of the computer you know don't dismiss them they're part of the family and um even with you know the tech chakra was like invite your family to come listen and meditate and do that so i think once it's like how do you not about integrating your life into the workplace. It's like we're now integrating our work into life, like our daily life. So, like, how are we doing that in the, the healthiest way for you? Meeting the employee where they're at, because everyone's at a different place right now. So it's not about like a one fits all. Just like our employee resource groups, just like the diversity and inclusion ethos. Like we try and meet you where you're at, because not everyone's at the same place. And some have taken this one way and some have taken it the other. There's no right or wrong. It's just let's create a harmonious place for, for everyone where everyone's got a home. Absolutely. People are all at different stages of the journey and we must help and support and guide wherever they may be at. There is absolutely no right or wrong. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess moving on, um, unless there are any kind of further comments at all, I'm conscious that we haven't um, perhaps spoken about anyone who might be worried perhaps about their career and development uh, within the organization or again, kind of external to, to the organization there. Um, and I think it's actually quite an opportune talk, time to talk about it before we do end up running out of time for, for today. Um, but you mentioned that it is very much about putting yourself first. And I think that is, you know, I think that's a great ethos, especially for now, because I think obviously there are a lot of people who are worrying about other people. And I think that is, that is fantastic. You know, we all must, um, you know, be there to look after and support um, one another and our families. But if we don't look after ourselves first, then it makes it very difficult to then be our best selves for others. And also, um, it is important to think about where we are headed, whether it be personally, whether it be professionally as well and perhaps important to realize that the world to a certain degree is standing still and we are all in the same boat therefore um, you know when it comes to progression uh, it's not all um, you know about who can who can get there first because we are all going through this not only just as a nation but as a world um, so any thoughts on 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 that side um, perhaps Kami and and Ailish when it comes to the uh, you know the, the career thoughts or you know others that, that you've been speaking with who are having worries about what they might be going off to to do next or any advice that you might have yeah I guess um with the time we have now, the additional time working from home um, and we're kind of saving time not commuting, we have a bit more um, headspace, I guess, to work on, say, our individual development plans or to think about um, projects that we want to get involved with through ERGs to make a positive impact at this time. And I think that will really help us in our personal development and mean that we can continue to move forward in our careers um, at this time. Excellent. And I think you're a great example as well there of the extracurricular activities, which I know is outside of this time um, of, of COVID. But again, a great example for anyone who's thinking, hmm, well, how can I do that? Adding extracurricular activities to your CV, your profile, um, and adding other things to your skill set. It doesn't mean that you need to necessarily look at a, a promotion. I've spoken to lots of global businesses right now who not only have recruitment freezes on externally, but they've got recruitment freezes on internally and don't necessarily want individuals moving across territory territories understandably because logistics can be tricky so let's be creative um, as a leash has done they're looked at being a mental health ambassador an ally and, and with all of you in fact who have championed um, you know everything from from fashion to being involved in other pieces around um, you know mental health and wellness EJ music you know these these kind of cool groups um, you know that is just fantastic and they're all things that help us with our future whether it be developing new contacts that could be useful later down the line or whether it be developing new skill sets when it comes to listening through mental health advocacy or, or whatever there are other ways to plump up the career profile and they could be far closer to home than you think i'm sorry cami i, I hope i didn't interrupt you there <clears throat> no it's okay no i think that uh, we are really like extremely lucky to work for a business that reassure us every day on the fact that we are going to keep our jobs uh, and that's extremely important i think um apart from that i believe that it's also a moment 
that we need to be like mindful and say like do i need a promotion now no no i don't need a promotion like now i need to show my best show that i'm still working show that i'm still doing my job and then we'll see if i if we've done well if i've been nice to my colleagues if i've like then you deserve a promotion it's not the time to ask for a promotion <laughs> i don't think this would be acceptable from anyone and maybe you've been waiting for a while but yeah but what is it it's like another six months another year what is it like it also these times make us realize that it's not that important and like not right now is the moment to stick together and and try to like make it happen let's try to keep the business rolling that's what's important then we'll see <laughs> just to add to what kami is saying i think like very often people just at times like this, I mean, this is nothing we have ever experienced, but at times of so much change and so much disruption, like people very often think like everything they ever wanted to achieve uh, or all the goals they had have now gone out the window. And in reality, that's not really the case. If you look at it, like we are privileged to have, to live in 21st century where there's so much technology, we all connected 24 seven, there's, free resources everywhere to learn every skill you wanted to learn from photography to uh, writing to marketing whatever it may, it may be and i think the way to look at that is more you don't have to change the end goal of like getting that promotion or like learning that skill but it's like how do we you just change the way you get there and if previously you were going to attend an in-person class well now you could do that online and you can still do the things you wanted to do and achieve them and i think this is the way to feel more in control of the situation as well and like that's how personally i have managed to like feel better about things is actually looking at my plan and being realistic that a lot of what i wanted to achieve is still achievable and if i have to be honest with myself it's just like my the initial shock i think of the situation that made me feel um like it's not all possible but in reality it very much is it's just changing the route to the final destination mm -hmm. and it's also changing the way you you work because you know, much of the work that I do in DNI or these individuals do here is client facing. I mean, I most of what I do is activations, bringing people internally together, going to large conferences externally, committing to things that, that can't happen now. So it's how do I contribute to the business and make myself um, indispensable, so to speak, you know, in the sense of uh, I'm. I'm still valued, that I'm still contributing to the business, that I'm still contributing to the, the values and the goals of the business, um, perhaps in a different way. So it's also being creative. And it, it, it normally you don't have the space to think creativity, creatively, like in terms of how you're gonna actually execute these things. It's like, you're just constantly moving and um, we're all moving so fast because our, our world is ever changing. And now you have the opportunity to breathe maybe perhaps and say, all right, how can I do things differently that still individuals or, you know, still engages clients? Um, you know, I know Cam was talking to us earlier, like about going on like virtual client dinners and stuff. I can tell you about this because it's an interesting point uh, to like, how do we digital, like how, how do we maintain inclusion? And like, I think it was each individual's mission to create dig digital inclusion. So yes. I, I am a bit the clown of my team. So always making jokes in the open space, dancing, singing. Um, so I was thinking, how can I replicate this in this time that I'm stuck home? So every day I'm using TikTok, very Gen Z. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I, do, I do a lip sync. So today was uh, Bob Sinclair, World All Done. And I send this every morning at 9 a.m. And it gives my team a good laugh. Oh my and God, that's so cool. I want to see it. I want to see it. I wish you had some music right now to make you all do that. That would be so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. And yeah, it's, it, yeah, it makes me happy. It makes my team happy. And it's a good way to start the day. And then other people add their jokes. And I think it's everyone's mission to do it. And yeah. I take it really seriously, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kami. 
And I mean, what a, what a perfect way to actually draw to a close. I, as usual with, with you girls, I could literally sit here and chat away all day and I always feel in a far more positive mood than I did um, at the very beginning. So I really hope that everyone at home, as mainly it will be individuals who are at home when they listen to this and those in the Verizon uh, organization, guys and girls, you are incredibly lucky. You've got some unbelievably passionate individuals here who I would massively encourage you to approach about all the respective things they have spoken about today. Um, but before we go, I, I will just kind of highlight a couple of key pieces of summary and then hand uh, back to you, Emily, to give us, um, you know, a couple of the addresses that we can visit. Um, but I think what really came out from today's panel, um, and thank you all again ever so much indeed, is the fact that actually this isn't rocket science. Simplicity, but with substance, is, is absolutely crucial. Um, you know, we're talking, we're giggling, we're laughing, we're sharing, and actually right now, that is what the world needs. That is what society needs. That is what businesses and organizations everywhere, how big or small you might be, that is what we all need. So, um, you know, really do, you know, try and make an effort to communicate not only with people that, that you know, but people um, that you can also bring into the fold, people you haven't spoken to a while, you know, people that you haven't heard from. Those that are quiet, make sure you reach out to them because who knows, they could be having a difficult time. And as we've said today, um, mental health is absolutely critical and making sure that we address those areas which are not just visible uh, diversities, but the invisible diversities that sit below the surface. Um, there are plenty of tools out there, plenty of support networks. Obviously for Rise On we've got the wonderful 24 hour network for those who are external. Organizations like the Samaritans are always there and do a fantastic job picking up the phone and really listening to what others have to say. And you're in an impartial, non-judgmental environment. And so, um, you know, genuinely these are places that you feel, you know, you feel you should and can be your true self. There certainly is nothing to be ashamed of. We are all in the same boat together. And so if you have got concerns or if you're worrying that you are on a bit of an emotional roller coaster, don't worry. We've all been there, as you heard today, um, you know, from the, the fantastic uh, girls on, on the panel um, and myself, you know, as well. It's been a huge emotional roller coaster journey that, that we are going through. It is days you feel great and days you don't. And so recognize that for what it is. When you feel great, be there to support others. When you don't, lean on others. It's a two way relationship and it's a two way situation. As, uh, as the girls said here today, look, this is a journey and we need to understand the phases that people go through. This is not a competition. This is a time now to really reflect upon ourselves, what we can do to nurture ourselves nurture our own well-being lots of exercises like the wheel of life that we, we've done before and you know again you can look up if you don't know it uh, to really address um, you know the ecosystem of balance within your personal and professional life and and really take a, a good amount of time to reflect on on what is important because right now um, you know there's nothing more important than you and being nice and being kind it really is as simple as that so um, thank you all very very much again and um, for being here today and um, we're going to put this uh, very special edition of our Dar Global Virtual Lounge onto our COVID-19 hub. So you can visit that at www.dalglobal.org. You can check out our many podcasts of which we have had Bryce on guests on. Um, Ram was on the other week, which was fantastic. And I encourage you all to come and join me as well. Um, so do check out lots of our free resources on the Dial Global website, which stands for Diverse, Inclusive, Aspirational Leaders, uh, which we absolutely have in abundance today. Um, so do check out the covid uh, 19 hub to support you completely free during this time of unprecedented change and you can also sign up for a completely free 30-day membership which we probably will extend as well and um, we get all access uh, all digital access to all the areas across the board within Dial, from podcasts to, to live streams to webinars to panels like we are enjoying right now so thank you very much again my name is Leila McKenzie Dallas you've been listening to the Dial global virtual lounge um, and finally i'm past to emily uh, to give a couple of um key pieces of information for people internally and externally but if you don't catch them don't worry everything will be in the show notes at the end of today's show so do check that out and download um, as uh, as you please well, thank you so much for having us and we really enjoyed it. I know this was something we all really wanted to do following the roundtables that we held as, as well, um, which were phenomenal meetings.
So thank you for always being inspiring and for leading the way for us and giving us this platform to speak. Um, for those of you listening, um, there's a really interesting thing Verizon's doing right now. It's called Pay It Forward. So it's um, actually increasing visibility and raising funds for small businesses and giving back. We have really, really amazing kind of um, One Republic is on there, Dave Matthews Band. So you can actually check it out on our Yahoo platform um, or at Verizon on Twitter. You can also follow our CEOs, on Vesberg on Twitter and Guru um, as well, all on Twitter. And you can watch them daily, giving me updates. Um, equally, please visit our Yahoo and Huffington Post sites for the latest news and check out our white papers, which are on verizon.com. Um, really interesting one about workplace of the future that Sam Path has just done, as I mentioned, earlier with Boston Consulting Group. So please check them out and stay up to date with the latest news from Verizon. Thank you all so much. I think we should give ourselves a little round of applause before we wave goodbye. We've all been fantastic <laughs> sports today. Thank you so much. Thank stay you. safe. Stay safe, everyone, and we'll look forward to seeing you again very, very soon. Thanks, Leila. Thank Bye. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.